Hey up guys! So today's movie up for discussion is the English black comedy from actor turned director Harry Mitchell. Say your prayers. This is his first time directing a feature film. He also co-wrote the script with Jamie Fraser. Say Your Prayers feels like a delightful blend of Ben Wheatley's Sightseers and Jonathan Lynn's Nuns on the Run. The plot is about two orphan brothers called Vic and Tim, played by Tom Brooke and Harry Melling. They were raised by an extremist priest called Father Enoch, who's played by Derek Jacoby, who brainwashed them as children into two adult Christian assassins. Can safely say I've never seen a film like this before, so already the film gets points for originality. The two brothers are tasked with taking out a renowned atheist author called Professor Bill Huxley, who's played by Roger Allen, while he's giving a keynote speech at this literature festival in the Yorkshire town of Ilkley. You can probably see why I like this film. They're not the stealthiest of assassins, to say the least. The film actually kicks off with a case of mistaken identity, and now the boys have the irascible Detective Inspector Brough, played by Anna Maxwell Martin, hot on their tail as they try to take another swing at killing Huxley. I had a really pleasant time watching Say Your Prayers. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm from Yorkshire and I'm also a huge fan of Tom Brook. But putting all that to the side, there is a lot of fun to be had watching these two inept, radical Christians on their mission from God, so to speak, and cocking it up royally. Both Harry Melling and Tom Brook are terrific here. Brook plays the curmudgeonly big brother Vic, who's very quick to anger and also not a fan of casual blasphemy. And then there's Melling, who plays the more impressionable and ironically innocent younger brother Tim, who's having a bit of a crisis of faith. Fantastic pairing of Melling and Brook. They made me laugh and they made me care. The supporting cast are also worth mentioning. Anna Maxwell Martin is hysterical as the prickly and slightly racist Detective Bruff, and she's complimented nicely by her partner, T.I. Millie Hodge, who's played by Flora Spencer Longhurst. She provides a nice juxtaposition as this sunny, sweet, optimistic, young, up-and-coming policewoman. They just bounce off each other so nicely. And Roger Allen and Derek Jacoby are just having wicked amounts of fun as the two polar opposites of the religious spectrum. There was a nice dichotomy there between them, which I enjoyed. Really, these two characters aren't that much different from each other. There were a few characters which I thought were a little bit underwritten. For example, Vinette Robinson's character, Imelda. I thought there was more to be explored there, particularly as she is kind of romantically linked to Professor Huxley and he's a married man. It's touched upon, but just like on the surface. But what kept me engaged with this film was how deliciously English the humor was. It was very dark and very dry. There's touches of the surreal thrown in there for good measure as well. Mitchell uses an all male choir that just randomly pop up in the more dramatic moments of the film to give it that sense of operatic drama. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I should not sing. It's ridiculous, but I loved it. As for negatives, I did think that the finale was a little bit clumsy in the way that it was edited together. I'm going to talk about it, and it's a little bit spoilery. I won't go into the big juicy details of it, but I will talk vaguely about it. So if you don't want it spoiled for you, I'll put a little time code here for you to jump to now, so you don't get anything spoiled. But if you don't mind my mild plot spoilers, then stick around now. So yeah, the finale involves the two brothers being separated. Vic drives off into the rural countryside. You can clearly see that he's driven quite a distance from the town. He's in the middle of nowhere, but then he's apprehended by the police and then brought back to the scene of the crime, which firstly doesn't make much sense to me. Why would the police bring him back to the scene of the crime instead of to a police station? But the even more glaring issue is how much time has actually passed at the scene of the crime. Because the scene of the crime takes place at this sort of church or town hall sort of place. And there's a bit of a scuffle between Huxley and Tim. And this scuffle can't be any more than the space of five minutes max. So Vic has time to drive to the countryside, run around in the fields for a bit, get apprehended by the police, then drive back, not to the police station, but to the scene of the crime for some reason, all within the space of about five minutes. Uh, okay. Yep. It defies logic. They do try to do their best to bury this continuity issue within the editing. They just make it all fast and choppy, so hopefully you don't notice, but 
I still noticed it. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Yes, absolutely. This film sizzles with English wit. I would definitely watch it again. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? Definitely, this is a strong debut for Mitchell with some top-notch British talent. If you enjoyed Sightseers, then you will probably enjoy this film. And question number three, what score am I gonna give it out of 10? I'm gonna give Say Your Prayers a score of 7.5 out of 10. As always, this is just one bloke's opinion, guys. I'd love to hear from you. Have you seen Say Your Prayers? Do you want to see it? And if you have, do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What score would you give it out of 10? If you guys want more movie and TV content just like this, don't forget to click subscribe. If you guys like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, or in the video description down below. And for more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Carefield, and I'll see you next time.